Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our talk, The Powerful Intersection of Drupal Development and UX Design at CyberDoc. It's quite a mouthful, I know, but hopefully it'll give you a peek into how we work together and effectively in our agency to make some great products for our clients. First of all, who are we? We're an award-winning agency based in the UK, and we also have offices in Germany, Spain, Portugal, and the US. We bring together user-centered design, strategy, content, and technology to build secure, accessible, and user-friendly platforms for our clients. We've been established for over 17 years, and we've worked with a wide variety of clients, including some brand names like Bank of England, the Commonwealth, Bosch, and Compare the Market. My name is Mira. Um, I'm a lead user experience designer at CyberDuck, and I've been here for just over four years now. I've led the UX work for a number of our key clients, working across user research and strategy, information architecture, prototyping, and usability testing. I make sure we bring a research and uh, evidence-led approach to our projects, while also ensuring that accessibility is at the core of what we do. Hello everyone, my name is Enrique Borba, I'm a technical lead at CyberDoc and I've been engaged in the Drupal community for more than nine years as a software developer. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the term user experience or UX by now, but just so you know, we can set the scene and make sure everybody's on the same page. According to the Nielsen Norman Group, user experience refers to all aspects of an end user's interaction with a company its services and products. And UX design is all about designing meaningful and relevant experiences to help people reach their goals in an easy, but also in an enjoyable way. It's vital for websites, apps, or any platform to succeed. And to achieve this, user-centered thinking must be integrated through every step of the design and development process. There are many UX frameworks out there, but what they all do is provide a roadmap for designing these user experiences. And they lay out steps of the UX process and give direction to the project. But UX design isn't only important for the end user. It brings benefits to everybody working on the build, particularly the development teams. Let's look at what some of these benefits are when the development team is involved in the UX phase. You have a clear roadmap for the build. In the design team, we use wireframes. You'll be familiar with these. The visual guides where designers show the different elements and components, how these are laid out on the intended page, and what the user journeys can look like. We use these to facilitate discussions with the project teams to test layouts, layouts and screen flows with users. And as the project progresses, we add more visual detail and UI um, elements to it and iterate on these. these Iterations reflect not only the user research and the testing that we're doing, but also the technical discussions with the project team. They provide a strong foundation for the build because they show you what you need to achieve as a developer and what you need to do to get there. And so because they're backed by research, developers can be confident that all the different elements are there for a reason. Without taking a user-centric approach from the beginning, Issues may be uncovered further down the line because it's not meeting the needs of your end users. So for example, you may realize that the information architecture is not working or the menu is too confusing and people aren't able to find what they're looking for or complete the task, which then means that the developers need to go back in and fix things and build it retroactively. So it's twice the amount of work and twice the amount of time. With a strong UX approach from the beginning, this is much less likely to happen. And there are so many factors to think about when you're creating a website, from responsiveness to accessibility. And if you're lucky enough to have dedicated teams in your business, it's much better to rely on the specialists so everybody can work to their strengths. And the UX team is there to help developers focus on their work, knowing that the best user experience is also being taken care of. Insights gathered from the UX process can also lead to easier and more focused conversations because you have a solid reasoning behind every aspect of the design and build. It makes it much easier to answer questions from stakeholders um, and, and clients around why is this a certain way? Why does it interact with this element? Also, if you face last minute changes, which we all do, 
um, or things that contradict what you've learned about your audiences from the research, you're in a much better position to be able to push back and have those challenging discussions. Collaborative environments also mean more knowledge sharing and better relationships. It provides opportunities for open communications. You bring in multiple perspectives and new ideas and insights from different sides. And so when the teams are blended in from an early stage, everybody can learn from each other and you develop strong working relationships that reflects on the work, which of course means a better end product. So we need to remember that everybody is working towards the common goal, which is to create the best possible experience and the best possible finished product. And in our case, in an agency environment, it means that we can deliver great results, not just for the clients, but also for their end users. Let me give you an example of the difference a user-centric approach can make. You're familiar with a mega menu. It can be used to show a large amount of information that obviously needs careful consideration. So here in the old um, USA.gov website, which by the way has been updated, the categories in the menu are not laid out in a very logical way. I mean, there might have been a logic somewhere, for example, it may have been based on frequency of usage. But just by looking at this menu, you don't know what this is, and it's not obvious. So we're forced to read through a large amount of information to find what we need. A menu should provide a good starting point to navigate the website. But in this case, the user might have already been frustrated before they've even begun and might leave the page. In contrast, the Estee Lauder example here shows the difference when user-centered thinking has been applied. Here you can see, just like the previous example, there are many products, there are many categories, and many um, navigation options, but they're organized clearly and give the end user a number of different pathways to find the information that they need. Research may have shown that when shopping for skincare, people might be looking for an answer to a particular problem, like dry skin. So the products have been ordered here by concern. Recognizing and respecting the user's natural behavior like this will help people navigate the site more comfortably and find things that they're looking for in a more intuitive way. And it makes it easy for people to find and purchase an item, brings increased conversions and return on investment for the business, and also it makes it more likely for the customer to come back because they've had such a positive experience on the site. But what about an existing site? Where do you start with checking the user experience? First and foremost, I mean, it's in my job title, but the most important thing you do is speak to your users. Get their feedback on the site features, what they struggle with, and observe how they use the website. There's so many different ways to do research, whether it's through interviews, through surveys, ethnographic st studies where you're watching how they interact with it. But the goal is the same, to find out what the intended audience is thinking, what they're feeling, what they need to do, and whether they're able to complete their tasks in an intuitive way. And you need to let go of any assumptions that you might already have about how the interface is working. You're not the end user, and you need to let their feedback guide you. You can also look at the website analytics and see which pages are being visited and which ones are not. Look at you know, time spent on different parts of the website, drop-off rates, and where this might be happening. Is there any dead weight that can be improved um, and that can be removed to improve the user journey? Which of course brings us to content, which is a hugely important part of your platform. It's what's conveying information to your users, reviewing and auditing your website content. Do you have any outdated content that can be removed? Any pages that can be combined or rewritten? Is, is everything, is all the copy readable? Is it accessible? Has it been checked by both subject matter experts, but also end users to make sure you're getting the widest possible range of inputs? Now, you may have challenges with these individually. For instance, maybe the analytics tracking hasn't been set up properly, or you may not have the resources to do very in-depth uh, user research. But even small attempts is a great start and can all contribute to getting an idea of what works well on the website and what doesn't. Right, so all these methods uh, can help you test the UX for an existing Drupal site, but for better results, it's very important for designers and developers to engage as soon as possible from the start of the project. 
and projects with tight deadlines. Uh, usually developers don't see the design until it's handed over for the bill. However, it is vital for both teams to engage uh, throughout the entire process. Both teams both be, must be aware of any design decision being made, as well as any limitation during the, during the uh, build uh, stage. This, so we can avoid running into problems in the future. Now, we understand that in the real world, it's not always possible for designers and developers to work closely together, side by side. However, doing so, even in small ways, can bring a lot of benefit to the projects. Having regular stand-ups or, or uh, having dedicated Slack channels can make all the difference. Working in agile methodologies can also help because if it's iterative nature, uh, help to bring to keep everyone in the loop. So at CyberDoc, we started bringing the developers into the initial UX and design phase. So this way, we gain insight into user requirements right from the beginning. The ration, we understood from the beginning the rationale behind, behind any decision being made, and both teams were aware of what each other was doing. After all, we are working toward the same goal, so it makes sense. We are delivering the best side for both our clients and then users. So we have talked a lot about collaboration and how important it is, but how do we bring this into the real world? Collaboration has always been part of how we work in CyberDoc, but when we started working on Oscar Kilo, we started thinking on how we could push this collaboration even further. Oscar Kilo is an online hub for mental health and well-being for members of the police officer, uh, members of the police force in the UK. This project involves a completely user-centered redesign and a Drupal build for the, from the old uh, WordPress site that you can see in here. As we mentioned before, developers were heavily engaged right from the beginning in the UX and design process. COVID brought extra challenges in the way that the different teams communicate between each other. At CyberDoc, we were used to work in a hybrid, uh, in a hybrid way even before the pandemic, but this time meant that everyone was working remote, so face-to-face -face interaction was not possible at all. To overcome this issue, we used a, seri a series of synchronous and asynchronous tools to keep the communication alive. We had regular stand-up and meetings over Zoom, we use Figma and Miro to share the designs and provide feedback even in real time. And we also, we, we also share documents and files through dedicated Slack channels. As developers, we were involved right from the beginning in the UX process. This meant that every, every board of teams, we were aware of what each other was doing. When the time came to build the first low fidelity uh, wireframes, the development team was asked to raise any red flag so uh, we could uh, avoid any issue that could hamper the, the build of the site. We advised to the UX team on how they could tweak the original design to make it work better with Drupal. There was a constant flow of suggestion and, and communication between both teams. And this process continued all the way through the end of the project. This resulted in a very smooth uh, process that made both uh, teams life happier and easier. This collaboration uh, uh, continued even after we start building the website. So if we encounter any problem, we always could resort to UXers or designers to have a conversation and try to find a solution together. This made the, the build process much more efficient because we could focus on our product project rather than making design decisions. Here you can see a high fidelity prototype for the Oscar Kilo website, which includes all the components ready for the site to be built. And here we can see an example of a particular component through all in the entire cycle, from the wireframing, UI design, and the final implementation. Notice how very few changes were required throughout the entire process, and also notice how an individual component could be styled in a completely different way. This gave designers and UXers the freedom for creativity, but always doing it in, the, in a, in a development-friendly way. 
during the Oscar Kilo project, the development team started thinking on this idea on how we could push our collaboration even further. So we realized that during uh, different projects, we were building again and again different components that we could uh, concentrate in and start a kit. So we created what we call the component kit that provide these components out of the box for all of our Drupal projects that implements Layout Builder. The component kit is like a starter kit for all the Drupal uh, sites that we develop implementing Layout Builder. We use uh, a Layout Builder at CyberDoc because it's already in core, and we believe that most of the development is going to be driven through this direction. So the component kit is a work in progress. Every time that we develop a new component in a given project that we think is interesting, we can feed it back into the component kit and that makes it automatically available for all of our uh, Drupal sites. Here we can see uh, different components. This is the live Orchid Kilo site, and these components are already part of our component kit. So in here, you can see a list of components that are part of the, the component kit. And so for example, you have a campaign blog, you have a content section, you have a link blog. Of course, we don't use all of the components on every Drupal site that we build. In fact, we have found that the fewer the components that we use, the better the experience for content creators and end users. The component library also chips with a, a base theme that we use to build uh, sub themes and, be and create bespoke front end for every Drupal site that we build for our clients. And here you can see an example. This is a campaign block that is one of the components in, in our uh, starter kit, and it's displaying the, the default theme. This makes it more uh, quicker to get something up and ready for clients to see. So Oscar Kilo and the component library that um, Enrique mentioned provided us the seed of another idea to improve this collaboration that we've been talking about. It's the mother file. It's so-called because it's the source and uh, the place where our designs originate from. So one aspect that worked really well on the Oscar Kilo project was that because the designs were broken down into the component parts in, instead of individual pages, the conversation flowed much better between the teams. So we thought, what if we built on this? Let's explore tools that would help automate this process and see if we can take this approach to other projects as well. So the thinking behind the mother file has always been there at CyberDuck, but this was just a way to formalize it within our working processes. Essentially, the file is a repository on Figma. It's a single point of truth where UX, UI, and dev teams can all work together. It contains basic ready-made wireframes of around 50 different components that you might typically use um, in a Drupal build, things that we use regularly. And this way, the, the baseline user-centered thinking behind these components is already done, and we've incorporated a lot of the usability best practices. So we don't have to design and create a new wireframe every time. Of course, not everything is included in the mother file, but it gives the team time to focus on customizing these baseline elements to make sure they meet user needs and also the requirements of the project. Or we can look at other unique elements instead of having to design the same basic wireframes again and again. Once the initial wireframing is complete, the visual designer can then go and apply the required UI elements like fonts and colors and branding and make the wireframes quickly come to life. The devs can then identify the elements and components needed to make these wireframes into the final functioning site um, and take these out of the component kit to configure them. It's easy sometimes during a standard design process to forget to include those frustrating but essential little details like footer designs or copyright and legal notices. But all of these are contained within the mother file, so they aren't forgotten and so the developers don't have to keep going back to the designers every time to request them. Of course, we're looking at things in terms of individual components here, but clients don't necessarily think of it that way. They want to see the bigger picture, the whole picture. And so the mother file makes it easy for us to illustrate this for them. 
So we designers can then create some of the key pages, taking the ready-made wireframes and putting in the content, the images, etc. And we can show it to the client to give them a more accurate picture of how the site will look and operate. Previously, we would have had hiccups handing over the designs uh, for development. But with the mother file, there is no single handover. Instead, the teams are constantly collaborating throughout the entire process. The UXers, the UI team, the devs and the clients all have access to the file and they can leave questions and comments on them. So it becomes a one-stop resource containing all the information and um, updates from the entire project. So there is no us and them. Everyone is collaborating throughout and working towards the same goal. The mother file is also not static. Uh, we have been constantly changing and updating it so we can tailor it for each individual product. Our approach of constant collaboration plus the component kit and the mother file brings benefits to everyone involved. With the standard set of components, we UXers can concentrate on user needs rather than building endless wireframes. We have more time to focus on things like research, um, microcopy interactions, and, and bring more value to the project. Every component can also be styled in a number of different unique ways. So visual designers can still have the freedom to be creative and customize all these components. And having access to the mother file also means there are no nasty surprises for the development team when the project progresses from design to build. If we're building every site from scratch, we just end up repeating ourselves. So it's better for uh, the development team to spend time working on what makes each site different. It also makes it easier to switch between projects, to, um, to be able to train new developers, and to cover holidays as well. And if a client site needs a new component, that's completely fine. Developers can create new uh, custom blocks and feed it back to the component library that you can use in the future. The mother file also makes it easier, makes life easier for project managers because they're closer to the detail of the project and they can work with the client and the team to build a clear development plan. By improving our working processes, we also deliver better value for clients. You know, projects can progress more quickly, we can stay on budget and save more budget because it doesn't need as much development, um, and they get a solution that's tailored to their users' needs. And as we're working iteratively, they also have a chance to be more involved. You know, when we show the mother file and they can leave questions and comments, their input is taken into account and they get an insight into how the project is being run. And finally, a much better user experience for the website audience. They should come to the website and know exactly what to do. By using some of the familiar um, components, they see familiar design patterns and this makes websites better to use. So, what have we learned? Uh, here are some key pieces of advices that we collected uh, during the Oscar Kilo project that we want to share with you, and hopefully it's gonna help you improve the relationship between the designers and the development team in your companies. These are key learnings that we're carrying on in any, any uh, future project that we are developing. As developers, it's very important that we need what are the user needs, what are the requirements, and what are the expectations. This will help both to guide the, the build and to limit it. We should be including from the very beginning in the UX and design process, which takes us to the next point. Stor a strong integration between designers and development team is crucial, especially if you are remote working. Using tools like Figma, Miro, or our own, or our own mother file help us to uh, enhance the, this communication and collaboration between the teams. Communication is one of the crucial elements when it comes to build a successful Drupal site with a good user experience. Just don't assume that developers and designers, they understand and they know what each other is doing. Regular stand up, show and tell us, that help, that help keep both teams up to date with what each other, each other is doing. Even if you can do this infrequently or in short bursts, that's even better than no communication at all. A good handover or no handover at all from the design team. 
a design handover. Should it be trade like a relay race when the designer just hand over the work to the developers and they just disappear? If we spot some issues during the project, it's important to us so we can come to, into, uh, to the UXers and designers and find a solution for any, uh, any possible problem that we find with the, the development of the project. Visual reference are also important. This gives us a clear roadmap of what needs to be built, and it's always better than just reading communication alone. And Agile working. One of the major benefits of Agile is that you can iterate a solution within your internal team and with the client as well. So you can, you can spot issues and problems in a timely manner. During the early phase of UX and designer, Developers should give feedback to the UX team and, and make sure that we are making the best use of the, our client's budget. For example, why to create a new fancy login page when we can use the gym, uh, the gym login module? But then how can designers and, and UXers propose such a features if they don't know about it? And this takes us to the final point, which is to educate everyone. As Drupal developers, it's our responsibility to educate everyone in the company in the best ways to, to work with Drupal rather than against it. At CyberDot, we do a few things. We have re regular launch and learn sessions, so whoever's interested can join and learn more about Drupal and how it works. Uh, the development, design, and UX lead, we have regular retrospectives, so we can discuss how we can improve our collaboration and make it better. The developers also, we run uh, short session to demystify Drupal that we do every Friday in our uh, company announcement meeting. And other teams within the company do the same. Is it true that we are becoming increasingly uh, especially these days? But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't spend time to learn other areas of expertise within the company, especially where our work overlaps. So. These are our key learnings that we wanted to share with you, and hopefully it will help you in the same way that it helped CyberDoc to improve the relationship between designers, UXers, and developers. Thank you very much. So you have any questions? This is time. Hi. Hello. Uh, actually, I have two questions. Yes. Uh, the first one is about components libraries that you showed us. Um, if I need to to upgrade or change or change an old uh, an old component component, um, if it's used on old websites uh, because it's centralized, like you said, how can you you ha you have to create a new component? Yeah. Or an heritage or an no, 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 basically what we did is that we, we developed uh, this component library as a, as a Drupal module that we are hosting in our private repository. So, and we treat it as such. So whenever we find a way uh, when we improve it, any existing component, we just do it. We do testing. And when we just publish the update and it gets replicated to all of our projects. So it's a centralized component. The same goes with the base theme. So it's a, the, the, the same philosophy behind it. Okay. And for new components, it's the same. We create the component, we publish it into the module, every site gets the update, and then voila, it's there. Okay. And my second question, uh, do you have a process after uh, the delivery? Like um, y you said, do you use analytics, for example? Uh, do you have uh, like content square or heat maps or things to understand our users? use your website, maybe to improve your UX uh, afterwards? Is that a question more for you? Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely do that. It does depend on... Microphone, on please. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, we do that. It can vary a lot by the client. Some of them are far more evolved. You know, they want the heat maps. They want everything set up. And, and we have internal SEO teams. We have testing teams. And we can set it up for them, while a lot of them want to run it separately by themselves, and uh, they run the analytics. But it's, it's a standard thing that we do. Yeah, so we do heat maps. We do uh, analytics. But 
we strongly recommend qualitative research as well. So on ongoing testing, we say every few months, go and do qualitative research because there are lots of things that data doesn't tell you, that heat maps don't tell you. People are dropping off, but you don't know why. So we also make sure that it's supported by qualitative research as well. I have a couple of questions online um, from uh, um, Pete Davis. Um, one of them is, uh, my clients expect the expertise of a UX approach but don't have the budget. What sort of budgets do you have to have to be able to deliver a full end-to-end -end process? Oh gosh, it's a bit of a, <laughs> how long is a piece of string? Um, we are very user-centered in our approach and so we rarely have projects where the UX team isn't involved at all when we start uh, from scratch and that's why there was this one particular slide where we talked about what do you do when you don't have the resources. Uh, we, we mentioned small things you can do. So we run a lot of workshops with clients as well. We uh, work a lot on upskilling clients as well because you know we're an agency, we cost money. So, uh, but what we want to do is also create long-term change. So we might do a one-off upfront research project to uh, build in templates and, and building blocks for them to then go and use in the future. So we do upfront research, talk to them about how they can do this, set up templates, give them um, guidance on how they can use this themselves, make sure analytics are set up, show them how they can use analytics. Uh, we've had um, client projects where we've, the, you know, it started with no UXers on that project, uh, I mean, uh, from the client side, and now they've actually got their own UX team. So we work with them to, to upskill internally as well. But the main thing is, you. Even a small start is good enough. It's amazing how many um, and how, how many clients have never spoken to their end users. So you start with some baseline analytics. You start with some baseline surveys. Speak to five people. Even five people can. It may not be statistically significant, but it'll give you direction. So I'd say start somewhere. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be expensive if you're it only interviewing five people, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Pete's other question was. Do your clients understand and sign off on components without seeing them constructed into a page layout? That's a, a very good question. Uh, something that it happened recently in a project that we're working on is that the mother file and all the components, uh, it was such a good tool that the client, the, uh, in particular the content creator team, they asked to access to this file so they could put together a prototype of how the content will look like even before the site is was already there. So the, I think it depends on the client, but we also make the effort to, to uh, explain to them uh, how uh, it should be used, and how you're gonna be used in the future when it's already implemented in a Drupal site. We detected this opportunity this time in this project, and I think it's something that we're gonna keep doing uh, from now on, offering this, uh, uh, this tool to the client so they can pre-visualize how the site is going to be, even before writing the first line of code. But you do that in the context of a page, so they don't just sign off on like a block or a message bar. No, or basically they have. We use uh, Figma to build this uh, repository of components. As it's not only the breakdown of the components; we also offer to them how uh, the different pages they're going to look like. But uh, giving them access to this uh, library. It uh, allows them to play around with the components. You know, I, I can't like a, a puzzle. Move the different components together and see what components work better with uh, what other components. And that's going to give you a very good idea on how the, the final side is going to look like. Okay, thank you. Any other questions in the room? No? I have one more question of my own, actually. <laughs> sure. um, we love Figma. Uh, we've used it a lot. But we uh, saw the other day that it's going to be bought by Adobe, apparently. Have you got any thoughts on what you might use after Figma, if anything happens to it? <laughs> um, that's kind of a mini crisis that we have run. <laughs> yeah, we're not a crisis, but it's definitely we started having this conversation. And uh, I think uh, uh, we share the feeling in the community that it might not be for the best. But right now, the, the best that we can do is to wait and see what happens. I mean, it's a very powerful tool, and we use it not only to interact with the clients, but internally, you know, uh, posting feedback, and we use it even in real time. 
So trying to find a new tool to replace it is might be a, a well a project in itself. <laughs> so we uh, we prefer to wait a little bit and see what happens. But hopefully it'll be okay. One of my colleagues pointed out penpot.app. I don't know if you've come across that, oh, no. but uh, it looks quite interesting. So we're going to see what that's like. But there you I go. think I, I read something about a competitor they call uh, Ligma. So it's not Figma, but <laughs> Ligma. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Okay, any more questions in the room or no? Oh, yeah, no, we've got somebody. I'm coming. Um, thank you for asking that, first of all. That's a great question. Um, I'm just wondering, assuming you continue to work in Figma, does development contribute to the actual Figma file in any way in terms of documentation, notes about any of the components or yes, anything like that? definitely. Uh, we don't contribute with design because usually we are very bad about design and me in particular, I don't know about design, I can put two colors together, but uh, we use the, the comments and that we use it as a live tool. So we interact with the UXers and designer sometime in real time. So that's how we contribute and we provide feedback to these teams and, and try to uh, make the design to uh, prepare it to work better with Drupal. So that's how we contribute. But then from that point on, is the designers and the UXers that own the, the, the design, if you wish. So. Anyone else? No, I think we're good then. Oh, yes. Um, do you put any time or work into uh, UX for administrators of the site once after handover um, and how that works with how the devs actually deliver their project. Sorry, time and what? Uh, administrators for s s um, sites rather than end users and... Um, yeah. uh, you mean uh, in the way they interact with the Figma file? No. Uh, in the way that uh, the UX designers and the devs work together to think about the editor experience. Oh yes, I think uh, well you can no, echo me for that. The, we have to remember that the client also have access to to the these documents and uh, the prototype, so they contribute in the same way that as we, the developer team, uh, we do. We post comments, we post questions, we post suggestions, and the client as well. And this interaction not only happens between the, uh, the design and the development team, we, the, uh, the developers, can also ask questions to the client on top of the design, which make it more easier than just talking up, uh, you know, in a conversation, in a ticket that is just uh, written requirements. It's always uh, better to have something visual to, to work on top of. Just to add, if I understood separately, it's like the content editors and people who are actually building those pages, right? So they're a much ignored part of the whole thing, we have to admit. And it's something that we have tried to improve over time. So um, for a number of the sites that we've been working on, we make sure they're involved in, um, in our, in our stand-ups. Um, we treat them as one of our end users as well because they're the end users of the system. I would say it's not and I'll hold my hand up, it's not been on par with the end users, the focus on end users as much, but over time we made sure we've included, we made sure it's got better notes and better usability of the, uh, of the system itself. So that's something that we've definitely been working on, but yeah, I think we can do better in that. Just on top of that, uh, I think uh, now that I got your question better, uh, uh, in the when we deliver in the site, uh, content creators don't participate as end users during the project, but we do training sessions to them. So we, we teach them how to use Layout Builder or how to create articles. And those sessions are very important because sometimes we detect issues in the process. So even though we don't focus too much in the back end because we are using Drupal and we rely on it, Yes, we, we sometimes detect some uh, issues that can uh, be fixed with quick amendments, and that is coming from content creators or site managers or the different roles that we create in, in uh, different projects that we work on. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, just a quick question. What, what tool do you use to project manage, like, you know, uh, to track where you are in the, in the process? What, what, what do you use? That depends on the project. <laughs> Sometimes, because of limitation with the client, we use Jira. We use uh, ClickUp, mainly. Uh, so, so I think that this is the two tools that we're using. Mostly uh, ClickUp. We have found that it's very flexible, very powerful. Sometimes too much we <laughs> get us into problem, but generally speaking, it's uh, it's a tool that we, uh, the agency, and our clients can understand, and it's uh, very easy to use uh, once you set up all the project and everything that it should be um, there to keep the communication with the client. Any more questions in the room? No. Okay, well in that case, uh, thank you very much guys, that was great. Thank you.